How would you like that? How would you like that around your dick? Ow! Fuck out! Get out! Ow! That's how they feel. They feel the same way. And another thing. I know. I know this is HBO. Half of this is not going to make the show. But I don't give a fuck. I have to tell you the truth. You know that. That's what you pay for. You pay for the Sam Kinison experience. I think it's time we stop coming to women's mouths. I think it's rude. I think it's unnecessary. I'm sorry, I know, I know, some of you guys are like, oh, oh, oh! But, trust me, it's time to just stop doing it. It's just rude, come on. It's rude to just blow a load in a woman's face. And I can't take it myself, man. I think it's, I mean, especially when you hear it make that noise, and they go, oh, you know, you oh, what was this about? Why was it, what was this for? Didn't have to do that. It is so rude. It's so disgusting. And I know you see these porno movies and the girls like, oh yeah, let me let me get out. Oh yeah, stop me. Get out. No. Yeah, that's in the movies. That's in the movies. In real life, it's <laughs> in real life, they're trying not to throw up the lobster you bought them to get you to blow you in the first place, all right? That's real life. It's sad. And then they have that look on their face like. And guys are real sympathetic. We'll just swallow it. <laughs> you know you ought to do women? Save it, kiss them, and put it back in their fucking mouth. They go, you swallow it! <laughs> fucking asshole, how do you like it? Oh, that's gross, dude. Oh, that's fucking gross, dude. No shit, don't do it. But see, guys won't tell you when they're going to come, ladies. They won't tell you. Because they know what they tell you when they're going to come, you're going to go... You're gonna bail. Lean up. You're gonna jump off that fucking rascal and go, no. Nope. I'm just trying to help, trying to be part of family entertainment. <laughs> Stuff the whole family can use. So, ladies, they're not gonna tell you, so you have to, you're on your own. But when you feel the body start to tense up, the, the legs start to jerk just a little bit. They get that Tom Cruise look on their face, like they're really concentrating on something. <laughs> That's scary right then. That's scary. Because I know a lot of girls are like, you're not going to come in my mouth, right? You're not going to come in my mouth. No. No. <laughs> honey, honey. Honey. I'm not going to come in your mouth. Don't worry, honey. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, girls, you feel that hand on the back of your head, and you go, no, 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 I can't get out. I can't get out. God, is television out of ideas or what, man? They are literally out of ideas. They're, they're, they're fucked. Now they're making shows. Now they're making shows out of household products and shit. They've ran out of uh, plots. They've ran out of ideas. A guy tried to sell me a satellite dish the other day. He said, Sam, if you have a satellite dish, you can get 188 channels. And I'm going, well, I've got regular cable. And that's about 36 channels. And I would say out of the 36 channels that a good 20 of them are shit that I never watched. I'm not interested in a, in, a, in a career in real estate. That's about six channels now. Guys trying to talk you into, hey, give up your present job and learn how to fuck people over. <laughs> By buying poverty without money. Yeah, yeah, that's worked out real well. Fuck the SNL crisis. Hey, you can be a land developer. What, me? I'm a fry cook. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I work at the cafeteria at the hospital. It doesn't matter. You can be a millionaire in no time at all. Yeah. So that's about six of those channels. And, of course, they have those channels that uh, are religious that talk about Jesus. And that, that's, that's one of those things that, you know, I wish they would understand that people basically, I think, know who Jesus is. Maybe I'm guessing, maybe I'm way out of line here, but I have a good feeling 
that generally Americans and the people throughout the world know who Jesus is. So it's a little frustrating to keep hearing about how that, you know, we need your dollars. We need your help. Because we want people to know who Jesus is. Hey, we know who Jesus is. Get a fucking job. Yeah, oh, good. Don't get me started on that fucking subject. <laughs> oh, man. The amusement parts is what killed me. How they scam people into believing that Jesus wants us to build a Ferris wheel. <laughs> and then, God willing, God willing, by this spring, we'll have our own log ride. Hallelujah. <laughs> For he said, he that believeth in me, yea, shall not be able to ride this ride unless he is over this height. The fuck are they talking about, man? You know, thought it was something to do with clothe the naked, feed the hungry, you know, shelter the homeless. No, 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 no. God wants us to have a mall with 104 stores in it, so people don't have to shop with the sinner and the unbeliever. They can come and shop with only Christians. God's mall. I'd be like, <laughs> that makes sense to me. I'm writing out a check. I'm writing out a check. Yeah. So you got about six of those fucking channels. <laughs> then you got this other stuff. You got, you got channels I never use. I, I don't understand. Channels like the Weather Channel. <laughs> How much does it cost to produce this fucking thing? And why waste the money? How hard is it to go to the door, open it, look outside, <laughs> and take a wild, uneducated guess <laughs> at what the fucking weather is? How hard is that, man? Do we need the fucking Weather Channel? Oh. All right, I'm glad you said that. We'll send that message back to him. <laughs> Fuck you and your fucking Weather Channel. <laughs> then you've got these shows that I have no explanation for because they're not really television shows. Yeah, stuff like that. They got one that's called The Amazing Discovery Show. The show, I'm looking through the thing one day to find out what to watch, right? I turn it on, and it's Amazing Discoveries. Something, in, well, maybe this is amazing discoveries. Maybe this is like the dead speak, life on other planets, how to turn actual rocks into some kind of fuel form. I didn't know. You know I, thought, I thought maybe this is amazing discovery. Turns out to be this guy, the only thing he's discovered is how to wax a fucking car. That's the amazing discovery. That's the big discovery. That's the big hoopla. That's the big, oh, God, 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 God. And he's got a studio audience. People have tickets. They, they waited in line to see this show. They were going, fuck Arsenio, fuck Carson, fuck all this. We got tickets to see Amazing Discovery. <laughs> this guy waxes a fucking car. Where do you see it? Yeah, Amazing Discoveries. Tune in next week when I show you how to mow the lawn. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> what the fuck happened to TV shows? What happened to that plot? Uh, yeah, no, but I mean, these cable shows are like, welcome to Dee Dee's Evans, they need a I think if it works, give it a real test. Go, so, yes, we have the Shroud of Turin here that's held the image of Christ for over 2,000 years. The Catholic Church has called it holy. They've called it a sacrament. But look what happens to it when we speak, stain eater on Jesus' face! He disappears! It's a fucking dish rag! Get out of here! Dane Eater, more powerful than the image of Christ! Oh, oh! I mean, if it works, if it really works, grab a can of it, put it on your coat, and hang outside the UN, and wait for Gorbachev to come out. <laughs> Sneak up on him. Sneak up on him, grab him, put him in the headlock, and spray that shit on his forehead and get that shit stain off of his head. Whatever that ugly fucking birthmark is on his fucking head, get it off! Grab it, you fucking shh! Go, stay in your go! Then Richard Simmons has got a show. His is pretty funny. He has a video called Sweatin' with the Oldies Part 2. Like Sweatin' with the Oldies Part 1 left something to be desired. Like, we didn't learn enough from that. We didn't see enough from that. 
Somewhere there was an audience going, no, no, we want more. Don't fucking tease us, Richard. God damn it, you bastard. You only gave us fucking sweat with the only part one. Where is part two? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like to see fat women dance and work out. Okay? This is nothing I like. I don't get excited to see fucking fat. I'm not talking about fat. I'm talking about women that look like sumo wrestlers doing squats and shit, you know, and knee bends. I don't want to see that. That alone pay 40 fucking dollars for the video. He charges for this. He charges. He has the weirdest fucking campaign I've ever seen. He sticks his head out of the box and goes, hey, hey, are you tired of young girls in tight outfits dancing around doing aerobics? I go, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're sick of that shit. <laughs> Young girls in tight outfits, I've had enough of that. Why don't you bring on the women that served me food in high school, huh? <laughs> Why don't you bring on some of those female bus drivers of the month? Oh, man. I don't know how he gets away with it, man. Sweating with the fucking oldest. And then he talks to him. He talks to him. And he cries with him. He looks like he's crying. That's the trick. That's the Richard Simmons trick. He looks like he's talking to him. He looks like he's crying. He's not crying. He's trying not to laugh in their face. <laughs> and by restraining the muscles in his face, tears come out of the side, which looks like he's crying. But he's not really crying. You can't be deceived. Don't let him trick you. And he'll talk to him, and he'll have some woman, God bless her, that weighed like 400 pounds. She lost 100 pounds. Which, God bless, that's great. But she still weighs 300 fucking pounds. And he's talking to her like she's a model. You know, like she's overcame it. And <laughs> he'll try and talk to her and not laugh. He'll go, J -J Julie? J Julie, do you remember when you were bad? <laughs> And he looks like he's crying. And she really is crying. She's going, yes, Richard, I remember. I remember I weighed over 400 pounds. I went to a family picnic, and we came home, and I couldn't get back inside the house. <laughs> and, and I had to live in the garage for a couple months. And then I also remember that uh, my kids told me about deal a meal which is kind of like Monopoly, instead of, uh, instead of uh, like, uh, you know, a hotel, you get a sandwich. And I, and I lost 100 pounds, and, and my husband's so happy. And this kid, I mean, this guy is sitting next to her, right? Her husband sitting next to her looks like that kid that was sitting on Hussein's lap in the news interview. He has that look like, I'm the reason they created Happy Hour. I'm the target audience for Happy Hour, motherfucker. You're looking at him right here. Somewhere, bar owners got together and said, you know, we're missing a target audience here. They get off of work at 5, they don't have to eat till 7. That's two hours. If we put out a sign that says, happy hour, drinks, half price, that's a target audience. We've got to make it. We've got an audience. Because a lot of guys are going to go home and go, you know, I'm not in a big fucking rush to open that front door. I think I'll stop at happy hour and have a couple drinks. Because that's the case, generally. Every, you know, because some guys walk home and they... Oh, I'm not drunk enough yet! I need a happy hour! Which is how a happy hour got started. Anyway, I do this new thing now that you might be interested in, and it's... What we like to do is we like to find a guy in the audience that has the worst story. A man that has a story of how he went through hell. How he went through hell how a bitch broke his heart, and then we want him, you must know the phone number. You must have a good story, you must know the phone number, and then we will call the bitch here, live! And give her a piece of her fucking mind, yes! All right, who's got a story? Talk to me. Nah, you get. you wanna talk? It's up to you, man. It's gotta be a good story, man. I wanna hear pain, I don't wanna hear, hey man, she, she made me pay for, all right, all right, come up here and talk. Uh, we have a mic here? All right. Right here. Here's the mic. No, no, here you go. Right there. 
I have to look taller. Just look at my contract. All right, so, what's your name? Gilbert. Might help if you. Gilbert. Yeah. Gilbert? What's the girl's name, Gilbert? Up here. <laughs> Myrna. Tell us your story. Uh, I just... I just finished getting engaged to her um, about a week after I got engaged to her or something. Yeah. I got a tattoo of her, and the week after that, um, she was with somebody else. She jumped me. Oh, uh, thank you, Gilbert. That, that was a real exciting story. Thanks. We've got some prizes back there with you with your friends. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about you. I was gripped. I was on the edge of my seat. I want a fucking story with pain. If you got a story, come on up here. Get up here. Give him the mic. Give it to him. Oh, yeah, with a dice fucking shirt on. I'm going to use you. Get, no, get him. Get the mic. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Take that fucking shirt off. Take it off. Get that fucking shirt off. Yes. All right. All right. Now you can talk. Wipe my ass with it. Right. And once, here's a guy right here with hat and glasses. Stand up, sir. Right there where you are. Come on over. Come here. This guy, anybody would wear a hat and glasses in here? I, I, it had to be pain. Bring it up. Talk to me. We want to know. We, do we want to know? What's your name? Kevin. What is it? Kevin. Well, what does she do to you? Well, I, I, you know, my, basically, my, my brother lost his, his job. And so I, you know, I, I took him in. I lived hey, with my girlfriend. Let's be compassionate. I take my brother. I take, sure we want to humiliate him. I take my brother in. Yeah, he took your brother in. He, I'm working. And you're I, working. He lost his job. I come home from work. I'm taking care of him. You're being a good brother. You're being basically, a biblical brother. Am I my brother's I, keeper? You're saying yes. I did everything. Yes, I, I am my brother's keeper. I was paying his keeper. way. He lost his house. I took him into mine. You did him a I favor. I come home from work, and, and, you know, he's with my girl on the kitchen table. I'm, the kitchen table where you have to eat your breakfast? Yeah. Where you break Where you break bread at the end of a hard day. What it was. <laughs> you, have to, you have to sit there and smell the odor of love, the odor of forbidden love, the yeah. stench, the stench, if you will, ladies and gentlemen, of forbidden love. He has to smell it. He can't even enjoy his meal. <laughs> he can't even enjoy his meal. He's like, well, I, I'd like to enjoy. <laughs> I just wanted dinner. <laughs> I'd like to enjoy this Salisbury steak and corn, but I can't help but still smell the forbidden stench, the forbidden love. Oh, bleh, bleh. Kevin, you're our winner. Kevin, our winner. Oh. oh, bring the phone. Bring the phone. Bring the phone, girls. Oh. We have operators standing by. These are the operators we have standing by. It just makes you want to reach out and touch someone. Ladies and gentlemen, this woman in the purple polka dot dress is none other than Sally Marr, Lenny Bruce's mother. Please make her feel welcome. She's my dearest friend. I love you, Sally! Darling! Judy. Boy, I got so many good friends here tonight. And you know another thing? Oh, it's Mike. I gotta get some black tape or a grip or something on this. All right, is the phone ringing? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, is um, Kate there? Kate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hang on a second. Hello. Watch me work, Kevin. Watch me work. Hello. Hi, Kate. Yeah. Kate. It's so good to talk to you. Who is this? This is Sam Kinison. I'm down at the Wildren Theater. Who? Yes. You are the winner of a very special prize. And what's that? Well, is, we have a guy here. Do you, do you remember Kevin? Uh, yeah. Do you remember Kevin? Yeah. Did you used to go out with him? Oh, a long time ago. Well, that's what he was telling us. And we were looking for a girl who was a fucking cop that fucked her boyfriend's brother! And you won! You fucking bitch! How do you live with yourself? You piece of shit! Get your brother! You want to join the mother 
jump and yell it. Yeah, you fucking can't, you fucking bitch. I hope you run in hell. I hope you run in fucking hell. Listen to the rhythm, Dickie Rockin' Bird. Do you hear him? Wilma, I've had it. 